Okay, so what we are having here is like our uh, amplified uh, 8 watt system. Um, so basically we are pumping two OPAs with this. So with 80% of the power I, we pump uh, two OPAs where we do uh, basically pump probe spectroscopy. That's what we are doing over there uh, to, to let's say investigate dynamics. And then uh, here if we don't use the V for the pump probe we can do here normal spectroscopy let's say. And then what I'm doing, I do this low temperature terrors uh, spectrometer or spectroscopy. So I use, let's say, 20% of the power that I uncouple to my uh, center. So basically, it's a, it's a, it's a standard, uh, let's say, um, set up to generate and detect uh, um, the terahertz that is going through the sample that is sitting inside the cryostat. And then of course I had to write some software to read out, to control the temperature and everything. Exactly. So what I'm a bit proud of actually is the design of it. So, I mean, sorry, this is for the... Because if I, if I purge it with full nitrogen, uh, sometimes I get a bit humidity. So what I'm a bit proud of is actually the, the design because this is like a chrysler that has four windows. Like this. So here, this uh, parabolic mirror is on a on a flip mount, so that I can flip out and then I can go in transmission, or if I flip in, I can do in reflection geometry. Exactly, and that's why I have such a long stage actually to to be able to find the um, the time overlap again. So the cryostat that we are using is a commercial uh, Janice cryostat from Janice uh, Cryotronics. Mm -hmm. so, so what type of samples do you find? Sorry? What type of samples? It's like a, in general uh, um, strongly correlated systems. Actually that's what I'm a bit looking for, what could be interesting. Mm -hmm. But basically it should be something that is like that changes uh, let's say electronic properties with temperature. Like for instance superconductors could be interesting. And then the detection I do with a balanced photodiode. So I basically I measure, I, or maybe here it is also. So basically what I, I, I measure is I overlap. So it's a pump probe setup. I overlap on my 800 nanometers that I decouple at the beginning. I overlap with the terahertz that came from the sample. And then I measure the, uh, the rotation angle or the ellipticity, let's say, of, 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 the, uh, linear, of the circularly polarized light. And then, of course, I compare. I always have to do this reference measurement, right? So I, I, I do because terahertz is uh, we are all emitting terahertz or, um, because at, at ambient uh, temperature, mm -hmm. let's say. So, but of course, incoherent, and this is uh, coherent terahertz. So you have to, let's say, make background subtraction. Exactly. What you are doing. And we are doing, actually this is, I mean, the generation detection is, I would say, quite standard, it's like a established, but what is a bit special is like really the cryostat, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then here, I mean, I have my, I, I do, I use a Stanford Research lock-in to detect the signal, basically. And then uh, a LabVIEW card, uh, and a location. 